Masterpieces are outstanding creations worthy of a place in history. They are the works of art we can't stop thinking and talking about. Art's meant to make a difference. These are pieces that continue to do so long after the artist is gone. I'm Lady K Flo. This is where I give you my quick takes on art pieces I call the masters. George Caleb Bingham, Fur Traders Descending the Missouri. George Caleb Bingham reminds us that Romanticism comes in many forms. His painting, Fur Traders Descending the Missouri, dwells in one of my lifelong pet peeves, the romanticization of hard work, especially physical labor, bugs me. This irritating practice shows up in all aspects of life even art. In the 19th century, many made their living as fur traders. This job's depicted in Bingham's painting. But it couldn't have been the serene, transcendent experience shown here. The painting conveys a heightened feeling of relaxation, so much so it arouses a meditative vibe. A worker relaxes, smiling on a bundle of furs. This painting reveals an in-between place. The hard work of its situation lies in the before and after. Hunting and skinning animals is backbreaking and dirty, but there's no sign of that here. Not to mention the tremendous weight of hauling cargo onto and off a tiny canoe while balancing all the while. So these boat bundles float down the Missouri to represent hidden hard work. Artistic freedom often relegates subject matter like this to the studio floor. Hard work isn't pretty. Many artists dwell in beauty. Bingham's painting certainly does. Selling a masterpiece. The reasons for choices like this often lie behind the scenes. That's because, much like the hard work missing from fur traders, Selling art is tough. Art lovers might not like to think of this when we look at the work, but an artist has to make a living. That means selling paintings. Would anyone buy a painting of a hunter skinning a mink? Not a typical art lover in George Caleb Bingham's time. He may not be a romantic at all. A man's got to eat. His painting, though, swells with an orchestral flourish of romance. The ultimate sign of its romanization lies with the cat. Felines are not fans of water, yet this one sits calm and still while surrounded on all sides by the Missouri River. Perhaps Bingham wishes to portray the profound sense of hard-earned rest that follows a long day at work. The compelling beauty of this piece lies in that mystery of the still water and the fur traders who float upon it. We're looking at Fur Traders Descending the Missouri by George Bingham. This painting portrays a father and son traveling down the Missouri River doing some fur trading, which was a big source of income in the 19th century. It's an idyllic picture, and I believe it romanticizes the notion of hard work, of hard labor. It shows us a calm resting point in the day. I think especially this is symbolized by the cat sitting on the boat peacefully. Cats are never peaceful, especially near large bodies of water, which is why I think it's a particularly romantic rendering. George Caleb Bingham, Factoids. George Bingham, 1811 to 1879, 
worked as both a masterpiece painter and an esteemed politician. A Missouri delegate in the legislature, he fought against slavery's expansion. This was before the Civil War. Known mostly for his Midwestern river paintings, Bingham also did portraits and landscapes. George Caleb attended art school for only three months. He was otherwise entirely self-taught. He created sweeping landscapes with large, dense composition. His use of space and light heightened the mood in these frontier portraits. Bingham served as Missouri State Treasurer in 1862. Then, in 1875, he became Missouri's Adjutant General. He worked right up until his death. In fact, George Caleb spent the last two years of his life teaching at the University of Missouri. Masterpieces are written and recorded by Lady K-Flow. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady K-Flow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Visit LadyKFlo.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.